2005 Shinetsu Kamoto's film Haze tells the story of someone who wakes up in a dark environment with traps at every corner, not knowing how he got there. This sounds familiar. Welcome to Vanessa Jupiter's sitting room. Today we are reviewing Haze as an excuse to talk about the Cube movies again. With a very short running time, Hayes is an extremely stressful movie to watch. We see the protagonist grunting and groaning and suffering so much through most of the movie, and every turn is more terrifying than the last. The traps are very simple, sometimes it's just a little bit of barbed wire on the floor, sometimes a couple of metal spikes coming out of a wall, but that just makes it work better. It's more effective because the simplicity makes it more real and more claustrophobic. And make no mistake, after stressful, claustrophobic is certainly the biggest adjective that I would use to describe this movie. The location is tight, and within short minutes we already feel like we've been trapped there for hours with this protagonist. A recurring visual in Tsukamoto movies is shirtless men screaming. And Hayes delivers! There is a wonderfully random moment where the protagonist looks through a hole in the wall and suddenly three men start taking off their shirts and screaming and suffering. It's wonderful. I wish that all horror movie directors would include a scene like this in their movies. But okay, we're here to compare Haze to Cube. The surface level similarities are both abundant and obvious. Both movies even start with a shot of an eye opening. And to be clear, this is a pretty common starting shot for movies where people wake up in unknown environments. I'm not saying that Hayes copied Cube in any way, but it, it is a neat little surface level similarity that is very, very easy to see. And this is generally true for the entire movie, as their plots are very similar overall. The main difference between the two movies comes in the form of scale. Where Cube has a group of survivors trying to find their way out, Hayes only has two people. While the effect of this, this scale change is obvious from a narrative standpoint, it also directly leads to a thematic shift. Where Cube is about community or something, Hayes is about individuals. If Cube can be seen as a huge, convenient metaphor for society, Haze can be seen as a huge convenient metaphor for the human psyche. In my first video talking about Cube, I talked quite a bit about existential dread. And I also mentioned in that that when the universe of the Cube movies is, ex is expanded in the third installment, Cube Zero, the existential dread is all but gone from the narrative. What about Haze though? Where does existential dread come into play? in that movie. The main theory proposed by the characters in universe as to where they are is that they are dreaming, basically trapped inside their own minds, and one of them states that nothing spectacular is waiting for us outside. Even though our inner worlds might be terrifying, the world out there isn't much better, it's just as cruel. War is mentioned at multiple points of the movie. Peace is just as elusive outside in the real world as it is in our inner self. Existential dread is linked to hopelessness. And the two characters that we meet in Haze are extremely hopeless when we meet them. Being alive sucks and there's nothing we can do to make it suck any less. While Cube had the constraint of wanting a larger market because it is a bigger budget, even though it wasn't super big, but it was bigger. And that means that as the series progressed, it wanted to expand its audience and the theme of existential dread suffered for it because this is not a very palatable theme to address earnestly. And Hayes absolutely does not have that constraint. Haze can be as dark and bleak as it wants because it is a smaller movie. The rest of my review will contain spoilers, so let me take a moment to give the movie a score 8 out of 10. If you're curious about Shinya Tsukamoto, but you aren't sure if you can handle his stressful, chaotic, mess, violent style, then I think that Haze might be a very good place to start, as it has similar themes as his other works but it is toned down and it is much shorter. So now, spoilers. Let's talk about the final scene. 
I don't know if this is a controversial or unpopular take on how the movie ends, but for me, it read as a reveal that both characters had attempted to commit suicide and that the first part of the story, the vast majority of the narrative, was the dream of the man as he actually managed to pull himself back to life. To continue the Cube comparison, in the Cube trilogy, as hopeless as they are and as dreadful as their situation is and as awful as the real world, aka the Cubes, are, they almost never seem like they're ready to give up completely. That just doesn't come up very often. So that leads me to continue thinking that Hayes is a much, much darker and bleaker movie, even though it is about personal struggles, not about social struggles so much. It obviously it touches on social struggles. The social and the personal are always linked. On a similar note, Cube consistently touches on themes of higher power and deeper meanings. Hayes, on the other hand, only ever mentions religion when it's to talk about a cult. They think that maybe a cult was the was was what brought them to this place. Everything that happens is bound to your physical existence. There is no afterlife. The closest you can get to heaven is by dreaming, and even when the characters dream they dream of being awake. Through the narrative, it really feels like there is no escape whatsoever. With all that, I think that it's super significant that the main character of Hayes actually survives in the end. He manages to live his life with all of the darkness of everything. He still chooses life and nothing indicates that he would want to die anymore. As terrifying and depressing as Hayes might seem on the surface, its exploration of the mind of someone who has just chosen to kill himself, regaining his will to live even in a tragic world, might very well be one of the most hopeful messages a horror movie about suicide could have. Love, Vanessa Jupiter.